Is this whiskey right here going to be as smooth as velvet? This week we are putting the Velvet Cap peated single malt to the test to see if it lives up to its name. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and like I said, this week I'm looking at the peated single malt from Velvet Cap. So you get it into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now Velvet Cap is a relatively new brand here in Ireland. They are, it's like a source brand of the Blackwater Distillery. If you watched my video of the distilleries to watch in Ireland in 2024, I'll put a link to that up there and down below, Blackwater is definitely one of those distilleries to watch. They are putting out some very, very good stuff. Um, Peter Mulryan and the distiller John Wilcox have already been releasing some very nice gins, kind of experimental flavors, and they've just started releasing their own whiskies as well. But up to this point, they have been releasing kind of more budget-friendly, approachable whiskies under the Velvet Cap brand name. The Velvet Cap brand name, it says it right here on the bottle, was established in 1880, but they're not that brand. They kind of reacquired the license and kind of reinvigorated the brand in 2020. And they're not like hiding that. They're not pretending that they've got some long-standing connection to it. I mean, Peter Mulryan has written a few blog posts about it saying that it's, it's you know, it's sometimes it, marketing can get in the way of good whiskey. So they've just got the license for the Velvet Cap brand, but they are new distillery making kind of new styles of whiskey. This is a peated single malt whiskey. They don't really give a lot of information at all about the kind of history or provenance of this whiskey. They do have available a five-year-old single malt whiskey. So because this one doesn't have an age statement, we can guess it's less than five years old, or at least as part of the whiskey in the blend kind of maybe is made up of parts that are less than five years old. So they can't give it that same age statement as the five-year-old whiskey. Like I said, it's a sourced, peated single malt and it comes in at 40% ABV. Now one thing to note about this, the bottle does say sherry cask finish and that five-year-old single malt I mentioned does say Bordeaux cask finish but from talking to the guys who work at the distillery apparently it wasn't finished in sherry cask, it spent his entire life in sherry cask. Same with that Bordeaux uh, whiskey, it didn't get finished in sherry casks, it spent its whole life in cherry cast. They said I think there was a reason, like there was something with the labeling, something with the branding. They had to say finish, but it was aged entirely in the uh, sherry casks. Maybe future releases or future batches of it will have just sherry cask instead of sherry cask finish, but at least this one right here does say sherry cask finish, but I have it on good authority from them that it is entirely aged in those sherry casks. So, since there's not a huge amount of info on the whiskey for me to get all nerdy about, I think I'm going to go in for the nose and see if I can find anything interesting. Cheers. Okay, immediately, it is really sweet. Like, it's it's definitely smoky. It's definitely, maybe not smoky, but peaty. It's like that kind of the turf influence, that kind of earthy peat. And with the sherry, with the kind of innate kind of sweetness of the single malt, it's a very, it's a very sweet peat. It's very like, um... It's kind of like, um, um, if you're familiar with this, there's sweets called wine gums. I'll put a picture up there for people who don't know what a wine gum is, but it's just kind of like, it's not really overly sweet. It's very kind of fruity. It's still like a, a sugary sweet. It's still like, I think mostly made of sugar, but it's not like those really like, really sugary coated in sugar sweets. It's just that nice kind of almost more natural, but still very sugary sweet flavor coming through. There's also like some like, Biscuity notes, like kind of a, um, not like a, a sweet sugar cookie, more, be more like a kind of like an oatmeal biscuit, like a, like a hobnob where you get like a lot of sweetness from the grains coming through and a bit of like jam, not like a huge amount of, I mean like a, almost like a raspberry kind of red fruits jam, not like, um, not blackberries, not plums, not figs that you might expect with all that sherry influence. It's coming through a bit lighter, a bit sweeter, a bit brighter. That smoke is, it's kind of like um like a it's kind of like barbecue smoke, you know, where you get that like the waft of smoke coming around. It's not overly powerful. It's just there. It's very noticeable though. It's kind of like again, like I said, that earthy smoke coming through. There's a bit of apples, like um almost like an apple candy. Again, going into that like it's quite fruity, but almost like a candied fruit, like those wine gums with the natural fruit juices and the candies. The maybe like apple candy as well, where you get that fresh kind of apple tempered with a lot of sweetness. 
and there's there's not a huge amount of citrus now normally with like sherry i get some like orange peel maybe lemon peel but here i'm just getting those kind of almost red berries the jam the bit of apple coming through not really getting any citrus but i'm gonna go in for the palate and see if there's any flavors there and you going to citrus or anything different there cheers again it is really really smoky and biscuity like there's that biscuity kind of character to the malt but tapered or tempered with that kind of smokiness the kind of um again i know it keeps saying earthy smoke but that kind of like barbecue smoke there there's a good bit of that sherry influence again leading up front with those like I wouldn't necessarily say juicy red fruits, but like those candied red fruits, maybe where they've been boiled a little bit and the sugars have come out of them, where you get that kind of red berry candy kind of flavor coming through on the, on the palate. It's not very hot. I mean, it is coming in at 40%. The mouthfeel wasn't super dense, but the smokiness does give it a kind of a, a bit of extra weight because it's got that smoke. It does sit on your palate a little bit heavier than maybe a normal whiskey at 40% would have, but I'm gonna go in for a second sip, see what else I find. Cheers. Yeah, second sip round. Like, again, that peat is, it's not, it's not overpowering, it's not dominating, it's not distracting, it's just there. It is like the constant companion, it is like the baseline. You got the biscuit note up front, after that kind of goes through, you got that kind of fruitiness, maybe not, as much apples, like I was getting a, a nice bit of apple on the nose up front. Not a huge amount of apple on the palate, more of those red berries, the fruity notes from the sherry. Again, not really getting much citrus, not really getting any of those nutty notes I might sometimes associate with sherry. It's mostly that kind of peaty, malty sherry. I mean, it's a peated single malt aged in cherry casks. Of course, those are gonna be your, your main notes, but it's not really delivering anything else, anything surprising, anything different than those kind of core notes that I'd expect. So I'm gonna go in for another sip, but focus on the finish and see, like I already said, it's a nice kind of long finish with that peat, but see what else I find. Cheers. Okay, so on the finish, as you take a breath, like that peat smoke is there, but like I said, it's that earthy barbecue peat smoke. There's still a lot of like the candied fruitiness there, but it's less, it's less kind of sugary and more like candied, if that makes sense. It's not as sweet. It's just like the natural, kind of almost natural flavors of the kind of the sherry, the berries, those kind of flavors coming through into the finish. Not really getting much like oak barrel influence. Like there's a little bit of a tingle there, a little bit of kind of an oak tingle, but it's not really like, you know, those oak spices where you get the heavy vanilla, you get like those baking spices, clove, cinnamon. It's not really that. It's just like a little bit of like an oak on the finish, but not a huge amount of weight there. Again, it's mostly that smoke, the biscuity malt. It's as if like um, I was eating some like oatmeal cookies or something that were cooked on a barbecue or like on a campfire where you get that smoke flavor into the biscuit. That's what's lasting the longest. Cause now as I'm talking, the berries, the fruits, they're pretty much gone. Like I don't really taste anything there, but that smokiness, the biscuity malt, that's hanging on the longest into the finish. Before I give my final thoughts on this whiskey, if you're new here, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays. I put out cocktail recipes featuring whiskey on Fridays, and I've got a plan for a cocktail recipe featuring this whiskey right here this Friday. So if you want to see that, make sure you check back, make sure you hit some thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. But now, the final thoughts on the Blackwater Peated Single Malt, for, well, the Velvet Cap Peated Single Malt from the Blackwater Distillery. I, I like it. it. It's not, it's not the, the biggest hit in any direction. It's not like super smoky. It's not super malty. It's not super sherry, but it's nice. I mean, would I maybe replace the bottle? Maybe not. Like if I might, you know, I, I'd probably try some other peated whiskeys before I replace the bottle, but I'm not looking to get rid of the whiskey. I, yeah, I mean, you can see. I've tried it in a few cocktails already. I've enjoyed this whiskey. It's nice enough. It's There's nothing really wrong with it. I think the, the Velvet Cap range is meant to be their kind of like budget-friendly kind of bottling. It's their budget-friendly line compared to what's coming out under their Blackwater brand, which is gonna be the more kind of, I don't hesitate to say the word elite, but like that more top shelf kind of releases. So this here, it's probably worth the price. I think it's about 40, 45 euro for it. 
for 40% single malt without an age statement. Yeah, you could probably find some in that area with the same kind of flavor, but I do quite like it. If you like that kind of flavor, you might like it too, but it's just a, it's just a solid, well-made whiskey. Nothing super special, nothing super wrong, just enjoyable. But then again, I'm also not the biggest fan of peat. Like I do like a bit of peat smoke. I do enjoy a little bit of peat from now, now and then, but my love, my kind of main passion, my favorite style of whiskey is gonna be like single pot still with that spiciness. So maybe that's where it was letting it down a bit for me. So if you've tried this or you've tried anything from Blackwater or from the Velvet Cap range, let me know down below. Me, like I said, it's a solid little whiskey, so I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this glass. And I'll see you next time. Sláinte.